Welcome back to the show. Our next guest is just quickly reviewing his notes before we begin. Because there's two guys, five romantic movies for Valentine's Day. We are helping you out if you're a dude. And we're just reinforcing what you already know if you are a woman. Hello, Patrick Malia. That's right. You? What you already know if you're a woman, which is to the good looking guys. <laughs> Yeah! How come we never do it? We don't do this often enough, just the two of us. You know why? Why? Sexual tension. Is that what it is? It's what much. it is. It's too much. When I was listening to that guy talk about uh, getting strip searched, yeah, all we? that went through my mind was, uh, but that's what we go through when we go on our mandate. <laughs> it's the same thing. The mandate for our mandate well, is... Well, it's the... Yeah, it's but the But it's not us. We don't do that. Anyway, it's anyway. Okay. The We're thing. talking about romantic movies. I feel like we should have some candlelight. We don't. We failed. <laughs> We've already failed romanticism, number one. That's right. Uh, but these are our, our Patrick Malihas top five romantic movies? This is what uh, I think are the top five romantic movies. Uh, I wanted to go with number five. I wanted to start with something that was in the theater, something that you could go see for Valentine's Day. Something current for the kids. Something current for the kids. Something that you could actually see in the theater if you want to go on a good date movie. And that is uh, what is currently showing. That's No Strings Attached. Uh, this is Natalie Portman and... Uh, Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, and like uh, and uh, Bruce Willis's father. Did you have sex Ashton with Kutcher. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, yes. like, wow. I never think of it that way. That's horrible. You did hear the Ricky Gervais thing? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I actually really enjoyed this movie. I mean, yes, it has. Uh, by the way, where did you get that photo? My God. It looks like. <laughs> that picture of me looks like I came from the Justin Bieber Stranger Danger workshop. Uh, it gives you a nice long face, though. That's, that's why we oh, liked it. It's very oh, to make me thinner. Oh, you're saying I should lose weight? This show is awesome. Over. <laughs> Just in your face. Oh, uh, face. Sorry. Okay, uh, No Strings Attached. It's beautiful. No Strings Attached. Uh, very good date movie. It's fun. It's funny. Yes, it has the uh, typical uh, 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 stuff where boy meets girl, boy loses girl. Boy uh, has to get girl back. But the thing that's interesting is that girl loses boy. Oh. And she has to do something to get him back, well, which is a nice twist. I was going to say, it's about time. You don't see that very often in romantic it's, films. I, you know what? I thought, it was, uh, I thought it was well done. And as far as date movies go, you could do a heck of a lot worse. All right. Uh, Garden State, number four. Uh, this is a bit of a surprise for me, this one. Well, you know what? This whole list is almost a surprise. Why is that? Really what, like would this one. Picked? what would you have picked? Uh, well, I, I think I would have been Love a little Masters more... Love Masters 4. You know, Sleepless in Seattle, Cocoon. Cocoon? <laughs> no, Best romantic movie, Cocoon? <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, Garden State, what do you like about uh, Hey, Natalie Portman Obsessed? I knew. Oh. <laughs> wow. My wife is uh, jealous of my relationship with Natalie Portman, but now that Natalie Portman is pregnant, my wife is like, you know, she's like, obviously somebody else has been there. <laughs> so I have no fear. What but, do you like about Garden State, uh, What I like about Garden State is, uh, you know what, it's not your typical romantic film, but... Uh, when I saw the movie the first time, at the end of it, I got a little misty. Yeah. And uh, it's if, a I'm get, film. if I'm getting a little misty and I'm feeling happy and I have those emotions within me, uh, then I would assume that's a romantic. Yeah. Film. Well, and it's uh, nicely that. paced. It doesn't hurry anything. It's just kind yeah, of... Yeah, I was going to say, if I get misty at the end of it, I also got misty at the end of Transporter 3. So, <laughs> you know. I was like, it's over already? Come on! Uh, One more card, Jay. So, yeah, Garden State, uh, I just think it's very sweet. I like the relationship, the way it develops. I like the fact that nothing is rushed. And it seems like a modern romantic yeah. comedy. Uh, for the which kids. For is, it's, it's for, well, for the youngins. But speaking about the youngins, it brings us to number three, Princess Bride. Uh, Princess Bride... This is, some people would consider this the most romantic film yeah, of all it's time. A good film. Uh, Princess Bride, this is a movie that did not do well when it first came not out. Not at all. When yeah. it first came out, uh, I believe, uh, let me just uh, go to the notes here. When, uh, when it uh, first came out, uh, 1987, it only made about $27 million at the box office. It was considered a bit of a letdown, a bit of a bomb. Uh, and of course, stars uh, Robin Wright and uh, Carrie Elwes. Um, but uh, this has so many classic lines in it. This has become. Uh, almost the measuring stick of what is a romantic comedy. Yeah. Uh, so many brilliant, for me, one of the greatest lines is uh, at the beginning of the movie when the kid goes, a book? <laughs> yes, when I was your age, <laughs> television was called books. <laughs> And uh, it's very sweet. It's something that you can watch uh, with everybody in the whole family, whether they're six or 96. Uh, anything outside of that age range, though, they just... Uh, I don't like to think of 96 as romantic movie time. Well, maybe it is. I mean, it's Why are you ageist? 
I'm not ageist. This is why we don't hang out. Oh, is it? Because I'm an ageist? Because, I don't know. Because you're 96. That's because I'm 96. Offended. That's right. Because uh, inside okay, we're I getting into things that, that this would have probably been on my list because I'm just that kind of guy. Uh, when Harry Met Sally. When Harry Met Sally. Uh, it's such a, a classic. Movie, yeah. It's such a classic, well, and people, uh, when it comes to the classics, people tend exactly to the overlook them because well, they, uh, they say, ah, it's, be, you know, it's been around so long, it's become rote. But once, uh, I rewatched this movie not that long ago, yeah. and uh, I was stunned and surprised. Uh, honest to God, I was stunned and surprised that Billy Crystal was funny at one point. Uh, it was shocking. Uh, and uh, also, Meg Ryan did not look like the Predator. Um, it was it was like I was watching a movie from a different time. That's the sound sound of Antonio Banderas showing up. Coming there to is get a man, you. There is a man who was made fun of by Roma. Somebody hold my shirt while I fight him. <laughs> oh. so, I think what happens with these movies too is people forget, right? Like you, you sort of you generalize in your head when you think of that film. I think there's certain things that people sort of key on, but you forget how good it is in its entirety. Like I it's, love, I love the line when uh, he, uh, Billy Crystal's trying to console Meg Ryan's character. And she's crying, and she goes, "I'm almost 40." He's <laughs> like, "You're 31." <laughs> uh, because now that I am 40, I look so good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I don't think now the sexual tension is starting to happen. It was missing for a little while, but now it's really it about you know what we have between the two of us <laughs> four hands, two people. Um, when Harry met Sally, like I said. <laughs> I can't imagine or can't think of anybody who I've met who didn't enjoy the movie. All right, and your number one film. <laughs> your number one film. I thought this was a really sad movie, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. See, now, on the surface, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, on the surface, if you're of low-level intelligence, <laughs> is a sad movie. I don't know why I did that. That's, a, that's inappropriate. Uh, I apologize. I don't get it anyway, so I'm that's fine. fine. <laughs> I, you know what? You're wearing your finest salmon. Uh, shirt. I should not make fun of you. I'm wearing my princely purples. Together we go out and we are pastel danger. It's a new buddy cop movie. Um, so anyway, we solve mysteries with hugs. Uh, the mystery is how did we get so handsome? Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. You say it's sad. I think it's one of the most romantic movies of all time. Why? Because this girl loved the man so much and she wants to get rid of all her memories because at yeah. what point in time have we not been with somebody that uh, we've loved so much and then the breakup occurs and you just wish you could forget it? Because it, it tears your heart apart. It just rips you in two. And so Jim Carrey's character, he wants to do the same thing, wants to get rid of all the memories, but as he regresses, he remembers all these things that happened, why he loved There's her so much, why he felt... There's beauty in the pain, Patrick, is it's, what it and, is. And you know what? It shows you that the only way to experience true love is to be able to be truly vulnerable. And if you can't open up your heart and be willing to be hurt, then you can't be <laughs> willing to be loved. I'm just thinking, what are we, pastel guys? What's our crime-solving unit? Uh, I don't, pastel passion. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember I don't know anymore. why one of us sounds like a tranny. That's right. We're <laughs> he's Mad Mike, and I'm Prissy Patrick, and together we solve crimes, crimes of fashion. <laughs> Maliha, thank it you. It looks like somebody murdered this room with some <laughs> bad taste. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> And that is the sound of angry emails. <laughs> we are going to take a break. And when we come back, we're continuing on with Valentine's Day. Uh, but we are talking about Valentine's Day for your pet. We have to talk about your events, first of all, before oh. you get into the hugging. Uh, Federico's? Yeah, Federico's, uh, February 25th, comedy and dinner. It's $50 a ticket. It is the greatest night. date yeah. night in the city. It has received so many incredible reviews and uh, you see three professional headlining comedians. Uh, there is no better uh, no better value in this city. And then Mike McDonald at Darby's on Mike uh, McDonald live at Darby's, a uh, very special intimate show, uh, exceptionally limited amount of tickets, uh, $25 a ticket. You will never see Canadian funny man Mike McDonald in such an intimate setting for, uh, it is absolutely brilliant not to be missed. You can get all of these 
uh, shows. You can find out all the information via a little thing. It's an exclusive website. It's called Twitter. Uh, <laughs> and you can go to my Twitter Invite address. Only. Thank you, Patrick. At Patty Fatty is my Twitter address. Uh, if I were to drop dead, you could fill in and nobody would notice the difference. That's not true. Think. People love you. People tolerate me. It's very different. <laughs> That's why you are the host and I'm a guest. We're going to take a break and when we come back, Valentine's Day for your pets. Get out the catnip and have some fun. <laughs> Hug it up. Oh. Not a point.